I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. It's time for Southwest Radio Ministries' Bible in the News Report, a feature of your Watchman on the Wall program. Here with today's report is Carol Rushton. When I was growing up, most of my school classmates came from families who were members of traditional Christian churches. However, there were exceptions. One girl's family was Jehovah's Witness, another was Christian Scientist, and one girl's family believed in Herbert W. Armstrong's Church of God in British Israelism. I talked to Gail many times about her beliefs, but we eventually drifted away in high school, and I never knew what happened to her after graduation. Armstrong and his church seemed to pass from the scene. But in August 2010, the Daily Oklahoman published a news article announcing the return of Armstrong's Church of God to, of all places, Edmond, Oklahoma. The article, $20 million Armstrong Auditorium to open in September in Edmond, gave some details of the palatial college being built by a supposedly defunct church. The Performing Arts Center included Swarovski crystal chandeliers, Baccarat crystal candelabra, Brazilian sandstone countertops, a state-of-the-art audio system, chiropractors, massage therapists, and buffet meals for out-of-town artists performing at the college. Pretty ritzy for a school beginning with only 60 students. Although I surprised Armstrong's church had built a college in Oklahoma, I still didn't think much about it until an older friend of mine invited me to a concert there of artists from Israel playing Israeli and classical music. It was fine, and most of the music I really enjoyed. Although Helen bought tickets to other concerts at the college, she didn't invite me to another one until this past December, a musical based on the life of Jeremiah. She also invited another mutual friend and drove the three of us up to Edmond on a cold, gray December day. I remarked to Helen that I didn't understand why anyone would do a musical on the Weeping Prophet, especially since it didn't end well for Jeremiah, who died in Egypt. The musical was a low-budget production. The music was original, but there was no dialogue. The only spoken part was by a narrator. A few music students were part of the Heavenly Choir, but the rest of the parts were sung by the college's teachers. Irish clog dancers, most of them about 8 to 10 years of age, filled in the gaps between scenes, but there was so much dancing it became tiring as the musical progressed. Near the end, the musical took a strange turn. Jeremiah did not die in Egypt after the fall of Jerusalem, as in the biblical account, but instead sailed to Ireland along with members of the Jewish royal family. Jeremiah established the rule of law in Ireland, and Jews were the original kings and queens of the country. I was surprised that this farce of a musical received an enthusiastic standing ovation until I realized that people weren't cheering the musical, they were cheering the message. After the concert, I had to explain to my two friends British Israelism, which claims that the ten lost tribes of Israel made their way to the British Isles, and the British, and therefore Americans, are their descendants. If the British and Americans are the real Jews, then there is no need for the modern state of Israel. One of them said that this explained why some things in the musical did not seem to make sense. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. It is sad that the church of God has not changed and is still duping people out of their money. That's today's Bible in the News report of Southwest Radio Ministries. To get a complimentary copy of the monthly publication, call 1-800-652-1144 or go online. The website is swrc.com. Be here for... But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. The Word of God is something that I should be studying. I want to have an answer. First Peter 3.15 When someone asks about the hope that is in me, Lord, let me point them to you skillfully. But sanctify the Lord God in your Always to give an answer 
to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That is in you with meekness and fear.